Okay, I think we can start. Uh, as I said, the meeting is being recorded and the video will be available at the end uh, of the session once we process it on our YouTube channel. I'm pretty sure Evan can send the links to the, to the YouTube channel to the chat. So let's just start. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to our next workshop uh, on the NFTs and uh, how to build NFT marketplaces. We had previous previous workshop two weeks ago on Wednesday, where we covered uh, where we covered the topics from like more business perspective and and what are the the important pieces of the of the marketplace as such. Today, I would like to cover like more technical stuff from the perspective of, of minting NFTs, transferring NFTs, working with NFTs, what are the different types of NFTs? And uh, I don't know how it goes. Maybe, maybe we, will, we will have some time for, for deeper discussion about different like super cool features that could be built inside the marketplace. If not, there's gonna be another workshop in two weeks where we will cover the rest. So different standards, like super features, like uh, closed packages, open packages, how to work with them and, and gamification, etc., etc. So there is a lot of stuff. You are already like invited to the next session in two weeks, but let's focus on today's one. So let's start with the with the organization. As I said, this session is being recorded. Please don't unmute. Uh, ask questions to the chat. I will try to I will try to answer them uh during the during the session or at the end of it and uh and that's it from the organizational perspective uh, i forgot to to introduce myself for those who, who don't know me i'm sam i'm cto and co-founder of tatum and let's talk about tatum and who we are what we do and how can we help you in your nft in your nft project or in or marketplace or whatever we are building with that. We are the fastest and most scalable blockchain infrastructure, but we are not only the infrastructure provider who gives you nodes and we don't care about what you are doing with it. We don't care about what you are doing, but we know that your time is valuable and not all of the developers are skilled enough to, to know how to work with Solidity or uh, or cadence or any other like smart contract language or the blockchain protocol as such so what we do is we have our own abstraction layer on top of the blockchain nodes which helps you build applications fast and you need not don't need to be blockchain expert to to leverage the platform so minting nfts in in dayton's way it's just one api call and you don't need to know Solidity at all. You don't need to know what's the smart contract, basically. You just invoke API call and you have a token minted somewhere on the blockchain. We support more than 20 blockchains and we are trying to do, as I said, like abstraction on top of that. Uh, as we will see in today's, uh, today's session, you can just choose which blockchain you want to use for which feature and you just use it. The matter of integration to different chain is just the configuration parameter, parameter change in the API request. We do cover more than 8,000 8, projects globally. And uh, <laughs> we have proven that customers were able to, to fully integrate their blockchain part of the application in a couple of hours. So what's going to be the goal for, for today? Let's just discuss what's, what's NFTs as such from the blockchain perspective, what's the different standards and how you can leverage the NFTs from the, from the application and how you will work with them as a developer in your app. And uh, for that, I will, I will use Postman. It's a tool for invoking API. Tatum is the REST API platform, so we will communicate with Tatum only, and we will see the result on the, on the Blockchain Explorer publicly available. So from the last session, uh, we have a Figma prototype of, uh, of a marketplace for NFTs. This, this Figma prototype is, I, I can send it to the chat here for everyone to see. This Figma prototype is really a high level marketplace of, uh, it's a high level prototype of marketplace where you can see NFTs which are for sale. You can click on those. 
you can choose which NFT you want to buy for which price. You can buy one, you will pay for that. And that's basically it. You are, you have bought the NFT, you have user profile, you have some kind of gamification points based on your activities. So once you buy NFT, you can get some rewards. You can, more points you have, you will be ranked as an expert and you can have uh, some better opportunities to buy or sell stuff. So this is the high level prototype we we're talking about last time, two weeks ago. You can see that uh, that workshop on our YouTube channel already. So let's focus today on, on, on implementing a specific feature. And the specific feature for us is the marketplace as such and how the, how the, oh, I cannot click here. Oh, okay. And how the items are being like created on the blockchain. So how does the NFTs just being created? Was the NFT a surgeon? What's, what's the stuff around this? So first of all, NFTs, as we understand now, has, is a type of a smart contract deployed on the blockchain. It's deployed, usually most of you know Ethereum and the OpenSea marketplace or projects like Rarible's, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the NFTs are the type of the smart contract and we will leverage today the ERC721 type. And uh, we will show you how to build this type of, of uh, smart contract, this type of NFTs and how can you mint and transfer those tokens. Maybe for, for people who don't know what the mint is, minting process is a process when you will create one unique token on the blockchain. It's called uh, a minting. And once you create the token, it has some special ID, which is unique across the blockchain. So no other token of this type can have the same ID as, as any other token. And uh, then you can place those NFTs on the marketplace for other users or other people to buy them from you. And once you, uh, once you put them and someone buy it, you need to transfer those NFTs to a different owner because he buys it. So, so there, there are like two important operations which we will cover today. It's the mint when you will create the token on the blockchain and it's a transfer so we will transfer the ownership of the token. Of course, you have to have some operations uh, for displaying the data from the, from the blockchain, for, for displaying which tokens does which address owns and uh, what's the metadata in, uh, connected to that, to the token. And this is, again, important feature and important like part of the, of the NFT, of the NFTs as such is how you store the, the information about the token. Because if, if we take a look at the, at the detail of this, for example, mana booster, let's say this is a marketplace for some gaming items, and this is a mana booster. And this one is basically some kind of image or description for that, for that specific NFT token. And this data has to be obtained from some source, but also on the other hand, other hand they has to be connected to that specific NFT token built, uh, minted on the blockchain. You can see we have like 10 or 20 different IDs of the tokens who represents the same mana booster item. We have 274, et cetera, et cetera. So we can have multiple NFTs of same type, but all the time they have different IDs. And with that ID, there's connected some metadata information and uh, we will leverage that also in the in the examples. So four important like operations: it's minting new tokens, transferring, obtaining the balance of the address of the tokens, and obtain a specific metadata information for a specific token we want to know. So those are basically four API calls in our platform you need to perform in order to uh, to do this to mint and transfer. And that's like the, the key logic behind. So let's let's jump straight, straight to it and, and let's take a look. We have, as I said, we will do the demo today in a postman. The URL is endpoint to our, to our public uh, cloud API infrastructure. 
you can obtain free API keys from, from our website and you can play around. There are no limitations. Uh, you can do whatever you want. The only limitation is five requests per second, but for development purposes, it's just enough. And we need to deploy, we, we need to perform like a couple of operations on the smart contracts and on, on, the, on the blockchain. First, like the, the prerequisite of working with NFTs is create the actual smart contract on the blockchain because every token is connected to a specific smart contract somewhere in the blockchain and you are just minting new tokens on that smart contract. So let's call it as, a, as an envelope for, for a tokens you are working with. So first operation I need to perform is deploy a new NFT token. Deploy is pretty simple because you don't have to, as I said, you don't have to code solidity, solidity you don't have to do anything. There is just a standard template for that ready for you. What you will do is you will just set the name of the of the to, of the of the contract, set the symbol. You will choose the chain you want to deploy the token with. So I, I have chosen Binance Smart Chain because it's quite fast for the demo purposes. But you can as well set Ethereum. You can as well set Flow. You can as well set uh, set Celo, for example, or any other blockchain we will uh, we will support in the future with the NFT specifications. It will be just new configuration parameter of this chain uh, property. And you set the, the private key, the address from which you want to deploy the token. I have already deployed one on the Binance Smart Chain. So let's take a look at the transaction of uh, uh, on, the, on the block scan, on, on the, of the BSC scan. I'm using testnet version because it's free and you don't have to pay for the gas with the real BNB. But we can see that uh, I have created uh, the ERC721 contract. The contract name is NFT Workshop. As I said, there's a, there's a symbol. And what I already did is I have minted one token. I have minted one token with ID5 and I minted it to a specific recipient. So to do the mint operation with you as well, we need to perform another call, which is an NFT mint operation. And again, what's the important part is setting up the private key from which you will mint. It must be the same private key as for the deploy. We have a handy operation uh, where you can, where you can uh, get the contract address from the, from the transaction ID because what, the transactions are not settled immediately. You need to usually wait a couple of seconds on the BSC. On Ethereum, it could be minutes, sometimes hours, based on the on the gas fee you, you have set up. And you can obtain the, the transaction ID from the transaction. I don't think I have it prepared here, but I can do it very easily. I think it's a it's an address endpoint. Uh, I don't have it here ready, so let's just copy paste the address from the BSC scan. And every mint operation needs to come, every like the NFT operation will communicate with the contract address you have deployed from the previous step. So every mint, every transfer, every every read operation, will have you will have to provide the address of the smart contract you want to communicate with from the blockchain. So let's say I will communicate with this smart contract that I have created before. I need to set up a recipient of the minted token. I need to set up an ID of the token I want to mint. I have already mint number five, so let's mint number one. And I need to set up a URL. The URL is the URL of the metadata. Uh, and the metadata is a JSON scheme. The JSON scheme which describes the name, the image, the description, and any other properties you want to attach to that specific token. Every like uh, wallet or client application like OpenSea or, or MetaMask, they, if you follow the specification of the metadata, they will be able to display the information correctly on their end. So they will be able to display the image, they will be able to display the video, the name, description, etc., etc. So once you set up this, you set up this scheme correctly, you are free to go on every like client application. And again, you can choose the chain. Right now we are working on a BSC, 
because it's fast. So let's just hit send. And we will see the result is always a transaction ID because it's something which is communicating with the blockchain and from the transaction ID, you can fetch the results. So let's take a look at this uh, transaction and we can see that we have minted another NFT workshop token. This time it's ID number one. The mint operation is always from the zero sender to our defined recipient. So if we, if we take a look at the token number one at the details of it, we can see the, the history. We can see that token number one, there is only one operation and it's a mint operation to this recipient. So we, we are able to mint as many tokens as we want. Right now, what we need to do, we need to transfer those tokens to someone else. So again, we need to set up the correct contract address. We need to set up the correct private key of the owner of the token. We will transfer. So right now we are going to transfer token number five from this guy, from the 811, to a 101 recipient. And we need to set the, co the, the correct chain, which is Binance Smart Chain. Uh, and I suppose I'm transferring the token, which I do not own. So we, re we have, an, uh, we were trying to transfer the token, which we don't own. I don't know if I have a correct uh, private key for this specific, I don't have the correct private key. So I need to mint the token to a different, to a different uh, recipient. I will mint the token number 11. Let's check the token number 11, if it's present or not. Uh, okay, so token number 11 uh, belongs to me, to the original sender. So right now I can transfer the token number 11 from me to the 010 guy. So you can see we are live because we have an error in the API. You could see that what happens if you try to transfer token you don't own, you just get error. It's not possible to, to touch on the tokens which you do not have that. Uh, question from Fabricio, Ethereum, BSC and Matic. We don't support Matic yet, but it's very top priority in our, in our pipeline. And I believe in the next couple of weeks, uh, we will support Matic as well. For, for NFT stuff. So now we have transferred token number 11. And uh, in the history of the token, we can see uh, that it was transferred from, from, from me to someone else. Right now, if I want to, so we have operations like deploy, which is a prerequisite. We have minting, we have transferring. So that's like the most important stuff in the marketplace. You want to transfer and you want to have something to transfer. But what's also important is uh, that you want to fetch which tokens you own based on the smart contract. So I'm trying to find out if this address owns any of these tokens. I suppose I have none on this address. But if I take a look here to the 0 0.01, 0 0101 guy, he owns one token, so I'm pretty sure that we will see the ID of the token he owns, and it's 11. So again, once your user signs into the NFT marketplace, you usually would like to show them which tokens they own, actually. And this is the operation for that, the balance of the token. And another like important operation uh, is the metadata. So you want to see what are the metadata for the token number one? Uh, what are the metadata for token number one? We can see it's the met, it's what we have set up in the mint operation. So if you want to go to the details of the token, you will have the metadata available for you and you can show them to your customers. Question for Atul. Support for Polkadot, is it compatible with Moon being built on Polkadot, which is Ethereum compatible? Anything which is Ethereum compatible, we will support eventually. 
Polkadot is also top priority for us. And uh, that's the, that's again, Polkadot, uh, Solana, Nier, Avalanche, and Matic are top five chains you want to integrate in the near future. And we will enable the functionalities for that. So that's also the answer for Suraf uh, about new protocol. Does this API deploy of metadata in IPFS or internet computer? You can choose where you want to deploy the metadata because this is like uh, the provider agnostic. You just set URL here and it could be URL for IPFS or, or anywhere. If you want to put it on AWS, we don't care. This is just the endpoint to, to the specific storage where you have that. We will also sub support in the future the, the ability to deploy data to the IPFS as such. So you will have like smooth integration to the IPFS as well. So this was very, very, very quick and very high level. What you can do with the, with the, with NFTs, you, you, you have to deploy. Why IPFS and not AWS question for, from Dominic. Well, IPFS is a decentralized like file storage and some of the marketplaces which want to be like uh, not marketplace but some like uh, owners of the tokens they want to have the data stored somewhere not owned like, like forever and aws can just delete those data as fabricio answered metadata should live forever so <laughs> you don't want someone to delete that from s3 bucket you want to have that like permanent forever but it's your choice. Some projects, they just mint tokens with AWS metadata. It's up to them. It's their business call. Uh, okay, so we have like these basic operations, what we can do. And right now there is some, some cool stuff, which uh, is not part of the seven to one standard but uh, I think it's quite important. And it's again, convenient for developers to leverage these things. For example, the ERC721 standards, you are able only to mint one token to one recipient in one API call. And that's basically, it's quite like, first of all, time consuming. If you imagine that you want to mint the series of 1000 tokens, you need to perform 1000 blockchain operations and wait 1000 operations to come to like complete and if you do million you are just like <laughs> you don't want to do that so for this like solution for this is either you will Im implement another standard which is called erc 1155 and we will cover that later in in two weeks or we have added a, a batch minting so you can set up multiple recipients and you can mint multiple tokens with multiple urls in one API call. So you can basically mint 100 NFT seven to ones in one API call, and you will mint 100 of those. This is quite time consuming, gas consuming, nerve consuming, <laughs> just kidding. So this is like a really, uh, if you would do that, it's time consuming uh, and everything. If you do it like this, you will save a lot of stuff also in the integration. Uh, so this is the one one thing which I wanted to show you today. If you want, we can we can perform the call. So I I will not I will not uh, so we want to invo uh, issue two tokens to two recipients, let's say with the same metadata. And the tokens will be will be 100 and 200. So let's mean those two, and we will see in the transaction that we have created like two tokens in one uh, in one transaction. The transaction cost is a little bit lower than if you would mint only one. We have consumed 300,000 uh, gas. And if we take a look, uh, what's the cost of the, of the mint? 
checking this one was the mint. This is 160. So you save like 20,000 gas units for one, for one. Uh, so, so you save basically 10,000 gas units for one token in one operation. Yeah. So if, if you will mint 100, it, it could be like significant, uh, significant saver of, of your, of your funds. And uh, especially if you are using Ethereum, where, where, where one mint costs like $20, you can count very easily what's the, what's the transaction cost connected to that. And I think we, we have almost run out of, out of time. I don't want to do, do it uh, too long today. So I think we have covered everything I wanted today. Very brief introduction of NFTs and 7 to 1 standard deploying, minting, transferring, reading uh, the token addresses and reading the metadata. And if we visualize it here to the, to, the, to the marketplace prototype, this is the detail of the token. So you would call get metadata here and display it. This is the, okay, I don't think I will click there. <laughs> okay, let's try to buy something. This operation, overview of the items you own is the get tokens by address. The buy operation or the sell operation, you whatever, once you are changing the ownership is the transfer and somewhere from the admin, from the back office, from, from, the, from, from the application out of this like front office, you will mean the tokens. So you will create that. So again, we have covered like four important topics in four API calls. Next workshop in two weeks, we will cover like ERC 1155, what's the difference? How can, how can we benefit from that? And some like cool features, like how to set, how to work, for example, with packages, which should not be opened on the blockchain. And once you open the package, you will lose the, you will lose like the, you just uncover the package and, and the, the value of the NFTs should be lower. Because from the collector's perspective, it's like if you are collecting comic books, the comic books in original cover is much more valuable than the than the opened one, and the same thing could have could also be in, built into the blockchain, and it's very like interesting feature and it's super easy to 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 do it, basically, and uh, much more stuff will happen in two weeks. So I'm super excited about you having there. And I'm happy to answer any question. Uh, Prince Raj, uh, development of marketplace using this API may lead to a centralized way of providing the service to user. It's called repo uh, public. Well, uh, we run our APIs on a cloud and yes, it's a centralized, but you are basically performing blockchain operations. So if you want to connect to the blockchain, just do it. Just run your own nodes and uh, do anything. We are not doing anything proprietary. We are just performing blockchain operations. We just give you the abstraction and easy way of working with the blockchain. So if you don't want, if you don't like the centralized way, you can just run your own nodes and connect to your own nodes and do everything on your end. But if you want to save time and leverage like the pre-built pieces, you can just leverage our API. We are not open source as the core, but the but important pieces like uh, signing transactions and other stuff are part of our open source uh, tools on our GitHub. Uh, so and, any more questions, guys? Uh, Atul, uh, how to, uh, to test the demos? Yes, if you will, if you will uh, take a look to our like developer section, there is a guide in the blockchain, in the blockchain uh, how to create NFTs. So this is the step-by-step -step guide of what to do. And there's also, I believe, a Postman collection where you can just import the Postman collection and, and play around in the Postman directly with the API calls. And also we can find out, find here any other like interesting, interesting stuff. If you would have any questions, we have a Telegram group, uh, Tatum IO. So you can join, you can ask their uh, questions or support. You are feel free to to join. We are, we all welcome you there. And uh, and also on our YouTube channel, there is a lot of 
there's a lot of uh, lot of videos and and guides and other workshops we have been uh, we we have been working uh, working on for the past couple of weeks oh evan i, I can see he has already posted there thank you evan Also on the YouTube channel, there's gonna be this video from today's session available. You can just take a look at it once we will release it. I hope it's gonna be today, tomorrow, tomorrow for sure. Okay, guys, thank you. If there's no more questions, feel free to jump to write me an email or join Telegram and we can discuss directly there. Otherwise, thanks a lot and uh, I'm happy to see you in two weeks. Cheers.